Hey everyone, welcome to the Market Internal Review for Monday, November 6th, 2023. I'm going to dive right in here on the SPY two-minute chart. So Sunday's video, I told you that I'm not uh, incredibly bullish at this point. We we had the, the hike up that I was looking for from the lows, given the, the growth chart here from uh, October 27th, which was Friday. We shot way up and exceeded my expectations of crossing all the various daily moving averages. I did say at this point I'm expecting to stay within the range of 437 to 426 and today was really no surprise for me seeing kind of what ended up happening. So we, we've had a monumental rise after the, the recent low, uh, topping out at almost uh, just a little over $27 of movement here and pausing right around the September monthly TWAP. That's a kind of a fair value measurement for September time frame based on monthly TWAP calculation. So multiple times right in the gap of this daily chart here between September 20th and the 21st, we've got this big gap that we've tested many times and we stopped essentially right around the low of that gap last Friday and really struggled to make any kind of progress beyond that point today. Now, we did come real close at uh, breaking the close of Friday, but we didn't end up buying it all the way back up above this monthly trend line. That being said, if I go and look at the New York Composite, SPY, Q's, the Dow, and the Russ, Russ had a, a major down move today and closed under previous day low. Uh, save for Q right at the very last second, none of the indices finished over previous day high. And that to me is you know, definitely more of a neutral to bearish uh, potential outlook here. Dow did finish in the top 50% of prior range. So did SPY. But the entire composite you can see here for the New York Stock Exchange closed uh, below previous day low price. So I'm still holding my bearish outlook here for this week. We do have JPAL Wednesday. I believe it's Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday prior to market open. And then on the 9th, so that would be Thursday, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It does not say that there's any other event around that. So this is not FOMC, but make no mistake, it's going to be something of high impact. So I'll be watching for that. And I'm kind of anticipating that we'll have somewhat more of another day like we had today where we're chopping within prior day's range multiple times today on SPY. And, and I'm going to keep preaching this, the previous TWAP first standard deviation range so the TWAP, at least by the default colors, it's this colored range here. That range high and low, if we're inside of that, I typically hate trading it because it's usually chop, a lot of indecision, quick reversals. That being said, there is opportunity sometimes, but it can be very challenging. So multiple times today, the high of this range was a short, but we've got this daily gap that wasn't even a dollar um, and it was a gap up which you know is incredibly small compared to the gaps we were seeing just last week and so many many times we were short right here around 12 30 I had mentioned on X that I'm looking for short side trades but I want to see the previous TWAP price break down and it wasn't much later we, we did actually have that. So this is uh, essentially that breakdown, close back above, and then retest fail on this uh, first standard deviation of session TWAP. So that was perfect. And it's crazy how many times that aligns with either a break of prior days TWAP range or mid price, lots of different things it'll align with. And it's almost always around an hour flip. So today it was around the 1230 flip. I'm still doing some analysis in uh, of historical data on this, but our flips specifically towards the afternoon session, 
so post 12 o'clock Eastern time, that's when a lot of these setups will occur to either direction. And as far as using this range, if we are below previous TWAP, that's more short for me, unless we're heavily extended to the downside. If we're above, that's a long. Again, unless we're heavily extended to the upside, then I can look for some reversal uh, type setups if I'm really interested in that. But this was a really good short, uh, short opportunity here with add and fold, full bearish. The only thing I didn't really care for was the fact that ticks were already really heavy on the downside. The average closures already nearing negative 500. So you can tell just by that average that we've seen a lot of movement and a lot of concentration of bear tick. Um, but fair enough to take for me and what I look for. TWAP itself hadn't really moved. The bands were not uh, quite wide at this point because we had channeled most of the morning. So fair enough uh, of an opportunity for me. Looking at this trade, I used SPX. Uh, looking at this, I do try to grab at least two SDs of movement. And my rules is I basically look at a reclaim of prior structure that was broken here or prior uh, uh, standard deviation. So this is the 50%, this is a whole deviation, this is another 50%, and this is the second whole deviation. And in this case, we had a, a really great move for one and a half standard deviations. And then we had a reclaim of this range low here. I don't like trading in this range, like I said. So that was a full exit as far as I was concerned. And overall, a pretty darn good trade. It didn't even last that long. Let's see. I want to say it was like 30 minutes, somewhere around there. Okay, a little bit longer. <laughs> I was busy doing some other things today too. So, so about an hour, just shy of an hour. But great trade. Now... We had a couple of different things uh, right here that caused us to bounce, in my opinion, based off what I look at. One, as a whole, the New York Stock Exchange, according to Mercy, was showing a squeeze. We did have a couple of extreme tick closures, so some pretty heavy bear tick side here. Even the average closures managed to break below negative 500. And I know the Qs also had a monthly TWAP level here. And I've also noticed, I don't show these all the time on the channel, but I like to look at historical 1,000 or 1K tick levels that um, go back at least 5,000 bars. So on the two-minute chart, it doesn't go back that far, but you can see in the past we've had some pretty heavy bear tick right here around this 433.6, 433.5, we can call it. So that was another darn near perfect bounce off of that. There was really so many things uh, that that showed a, a pretty high chance of a, of a bounce there. But also, it's always probable once you have so many closures and so much extreme tick that unless something insane has happened in the, the global economy or uh, something something wrong geopolitically, you'll see a little bit of a, of a reprieve from whatever the tick side move is, in this case, bearish. So it wasn't really a surprise to see a little bit of a reclaim, but right back into this range, and I'm not really interested anymore because every time we were up here on this side and we were breaking it and reclaiming it, it was more downside. So I'm going to expect a little bit of a bounce. And I mean, we ended up getting a complete range reclaim uh, up to the high side. And we also had trim balance, which always makes it more probable that we're going to have a lot of mean reversions. So we just spent the first half of the day being really tight. <laughs> so looking at the volume, which was another reason I was more focused on short side other than my daily bias and monthly TWAP bias, the volume. So here's a zero point. We made short work of crossing zero down on the volume. We never really mess with this cloud at all. We just continue to drag it down and down and down and down. And by 1230, we had already broken into the bear zone one time, broke back up, and then broke back in. 
So for me, that's a good confirmation type move. And um, the rest of the day, we, we just had heavy volume all the way down. And this is definitely another interesting point for me is we've got heavy volume coming down. And yet, find price. Price was flat. Not sure I thought I moved something there. Price was flat most of the day once we made it down towards that uh, negative 1,000 to negative 1,300. Uh, we came real close to negative 1,500, just 25 decline away from that. So, you know, definitely three quarter, 80% uh, of the market was sell side today, but did not quite hit that strong bear zone. And then uh, looking at VIX, so VIX was still moving down as well. So we did have a small pop, uh, not quite to 16, <laughs> really depressing. Then we, we floored it right back below 15 and we closed a little lower. So just so interesting to me that the New York market is printing really heavy sell side volume, but yet VIX, the VIX market is not panicking. That's kind of how I read that. And then right there at the end of the day, we get this little pump. And that that pump was not, well, I guess it was seen by the composite, but we didn't even reclaim previous day low. We looked at SPY, Qs, and did reclaim previous day high. But why? You know, there's no, there's not really any big tech earnings that I can, that I can think of. We already had Apple. Apple was a kind of a mixed bag. I don't know, maybe we have Meta or something like that. But either way, I, I just don't see much of a reason for it at this particular moment, save for <laughs> some the market makers piling in, uh, getting liquidity to pile in before the J-PAL speech. But that's absolutely speculation, nothing on the charts. So tech is kind of holding us as far as I'm concerned because the rest of the indices are much weaker. So we've already reclaimed uh, first deviation on monthly for the Dow. The Russ is definitely the weakest. We stayed under session TWAP the entire day and we're we're getting real close to October TWAP price of around 170. So Q's is still out. SPY is right on the edge. We had a couple bounces there earlier. Lots of capitulation here towards the end of the day before we had this, just this crazy ramrod candle right back over gap high, but still under previous day high price. Looking at the daily chart again, the RSI is definitely looking topped out, maybe a little bit higher. So, you know, C Tech is still inching forward a little bit on XLK. Notice the volume. So this is about 40 mil volume less than what we had Friday. And Friday we had that heavy top side uh, wick here. So today definitely more of a doji and not as much volume. So when we start seeing, you know, higher price, higher volume, that's a good confirmation. But when we start to see the price not being backed up by the volume, I start to think perhaps we're going to have a directional adjustment. As far as the other ETFs, energy sell 20 mil and finance still pretty heavy, 40 mil, not much else. Looking at our growth chart though, our makeshift RSI here. So I did mark out kind of this top and that one there is squarely on the 65%. And you can see we actually did have a small move down. And we've had these kind of smaller moves back here and here, and here and here, uh, even some down here and over here. So just still setting up as far as I'm concerned. And I, I really would not be surprised that we still don't come back down towards 428. So that's still kind of my range. If we happen to break over 437, we still have to contend with 100 SMA. So... I mean, if we just start gapping up like crazy again, just like I said in Sunday's video, all bets are off. 
but uh, I'm still mostly looking for more downside at this point. But I will adjust my plans intraday as all the data shows here. But I'm just seeing a lot of flatness, a little bit of a bullish pump right here back to range high. And I'm just seeing a ton of red down here. So where, where, where was the follow through? I didn't see any. We had tons of follow through for the upside. And we're just still kind of flat here uh, for all this bearishness that we saw in the internals. Therefore... I'm still I'm still bearish. So that's what I've got today. Um, not much else. Just like I said, I would encourage you to use the TWAP ranges indicator. Color it however you like. I uh, I like to color the first deviation with something that stands out really well, so I can see it. I mean, these ranges are very clean and provide quite a lot of trading opportunities so do the gap zones session TWAP and definitely uh, the MIT indicator it's all really good stuff so hopefully every day when I'm reviewing these days the price action the internals and the indicators hopefully it's helping people understand kind of the value for them obviously you don't have to use them and they're not a guarantee for success but um, they've definitely given me a lot of key insight intraday for scalping. As always, thank you for watching and happy trading.